I've had a lot of questions from people asking about different properties and wanting to get a little bit of practice with that. So I've put together a few examples here. Uh, if you take a look at this, at this first problem, I give you two angles. Notice that the two angles are congruent. So the larger angles are congruent to each other. And we're also told that each of those larger angles is bisected. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make sure that I mark both of these angles congruent to each other. Um, notice that they're both being bisected. And if you look at the end here, I want to show that the measure of MBC, which is the lower angle in the first diagram, is congruent to NYZ, which is the lower angle for the second angle. So basically I want to show that those smaller parts are equal to each other. Uh, I know that both the subtraction property and the division property will give, uh, take larger values and give me smaller values. But notice here, double use of the word bisects. Okay, I have two things that are both being cut in half. And so if I have two equal things and they're both being cut in half, what am I doing there? I'm dividing those things by two. And uh, as a result, this is going to end up being the division property. So in other words, if two wholes are equal to each other, the halves are going to be equal to each other. And by the way, if you're uncomfortable with this, you can also try this in a little bit more concrete fashion with numbers. You can fill in values for the angles you're given. Uh, you know, for example, if these two angles are congruent, uh, let's say that I was given a 60 degree angle and a second 60 degree angle, and I'm told that they're both bisected. What would I do with those 60s to find the final measures? I would divide both by two, and that would give me my final measure. So lots of different ways you can do this, but in the end, we are just looking at an example here of the division property. Okay, second example. Uh, in the second example, I'm given a line segment. I'm told that AC is congruent to BD. Um, again, first thing I probably want to do do a little bit of labeling here, show that AC is congruent to BD. So I have that labeled there. Notice that these things are overlapping each other. I want to show that AB is congruent to CD. Uh, those are the two outside pieces of the segment. Well, notice if I remove that shared segment BC in the middle, that I'm going to be left with AB. Okay, I can remove BC from AC. I can remove BC from BD and that's going to give me those two outer pieces. So if I have congruent segments and I remove the same segment, or if I remove congruent segments, I'm going to get two new congruent segments. Well, when I'm removing that segment from each, I'm subtracting it. Okay, so this is an example of the subtraction property. And uh, again, if you want to try it with numbers, you can also do it with numbers. Take your given values, say maybe this has a length of 10, and uh, this one has a length of 10. They have to be congruent. Um, it doesn't give us any measure for that shared middle part, but maybe I could call that 8. Uh, what would I do? I would take 10 minus 8 to find out that this was 2, and I would take 10 minus 8 to find out that was 2. And so I'm subtracting in both cases. cases. Um, again, that's going to be an example of the subtraction property. Let's take a look at my third example here. I am told that the two left-hand side segments, AB and XY, are congruent to each other. I'm told that the two right-hand side segments are also congruent. That's BC and YZ. Uh, so I'll go ahead and mark those congruent to each other. And I'll mark these two congruent to each other. Notice that I'm being asked to show that the total segments are congruent to each other. So what do I do with AB and XY? and the BC and YZ segments to get the whole segments? Well, I'm going to add those equal segments to those equal segments. If I add the same thing to two values that are equal, I end up getting two new sums that are equal. So this would be an example of the addition property, adding together these two segments and adding together these two lower segments. Uh, and that would actually just end up being the addition property. Um, if you needed to see this using numbers, um, again, I could also make up values for the original givens. If A, B, and X, Y, for example, um, were both 3, and B, C, and Y, Z were, say, 8, uh, 
Uh, when I have those two equal segments of 3 and I add on two equal segments of 8, I get two equal segments of 11. And uh, once again, you can see that you're actually using addition to do that. And let's look at my fourth example. Uh, in the fourth example, I have this triangle. I'm told that FG is congruent to HI, those two lower segments. And I'm told that both EG and EH are being bisected. So once again, I'm going to mark my two congruent segments here. That's FG and IH. And notice, this time I'm given two segments that are broken into equal sized pieces by that bisector. Notice that I'm given the halves congruent to each other. And by showing that EG is congruent to EH, I'm trying to show that the holes are congruent to each other. So, if the halves are congruent, what do I do with halves to find holes? Well, you double halves to find holes. So very important, anytime you're doing the multiplication or division property, you have to have things that are broken up in equal sized pieces. Multiplication, you're multiplying, you're doubling things, you're tripling things to get new equal bigger multiples. Division property, you've got the bigger pieces, you're having them, or you're taking thirds of them, or something like that. You're taking equal divisions. So in this case, I'm doubling. That's going to end up being the multiplication property. And that's my solution in this case. Um, once again, if you needed to try this with numbers, completely nothing wrong with sticking some numbers in here. Um, make this segment 15. Make this segment 15. Um, what would I do with those two equal 15s to find the holes if those segments are being bisected? Well, I would double both, and I would find out that each segment was 30. And again, if you're doubling two equal things, that's multiplying. That would be an example of the multiplication property. Picking up with our next problem, you'll see that I have several angles here. I'm told that angle ABD is congruent to angle EBC, and I want to prove that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Uh, first thing, for visual purposes, you really want to mark the two angles that are, con uh, that are congruent to each other. It's this angle congruent to that angle. Notice that those two angles are overlapping. So you want to ask yourself, what would I need to do to those two overlapping, or to those two angles that are overlapping each other, to isolate just angle 1 and angle 3? And if you look at angle ABD, and if you look at EBC, you'll notice all you need to do there is to remove angle 2 from both of those, and you're going to be left with angle 1 and angle 3. Well, if I have two equal angles and I remove the same angle from both, that's the subtraction property. I'm subtracting angle 2 from both, and I'm left with my final answer. So this, in fact, is an example of the subtraction property. If you need to try an example of this with actual numbers, you could make up numbers for those overlapping angles. You could say, maybe make this original angle 50 degrees here, uh, the one that's congruent to it also 50 degrees. They have a shared angle in the middle, uh, maybe make that 10. Uh, what would you do to find the measure of angle 3? Well, you'd take 50 minus 10, and that would give you a 40 degree angle on that side. And what would you do on the other side? You'd take that 50 degree angle, subtract the 10, and you'd also be left with 40 for that angle. So what are you doing there? You're subtracting to find your missing angle measures. Moving on to the next example here. Uh, in this next example, we have, again, some overlapping angles. We're told that angle 1 and 2 are complementary. We're told that 2 and 3 are complementary. So angle 1 and 2 are actually forming a right angle there. 2 and 3 are also forming a right angle. And uh, we want to show that those outer angles are congruent to each other, very much related to the previous example we saw, except this time we have double complementary statements. Um, be on the lookout. Typically when you have two complementary statements, or two supplementary statements, or two pairs of perpendiculars, uh, two pairs of bisectors, two pairs of trisectors, these are the kinds of things that you're going to be using, either properties from this chapter, or in this case the theorems having to do with complementary or supplementary angles. Um, double complementary angles very likely means that we have angles that are complementary to either congruent angles or in this case the same angle. If angles are complementary to the same angle, then they are congruent. And we can see here 1 and 3 are both complementary to the same angle. So this is not one of our properties. This is the idea that if angles are complementary to the same angle, 
then they are congruent. Okay, and uh, that's really just a great example of that theorem from section 2.4. So, not too bad to see there, hopefully. Let's take a look at our next example. In the next example, I'm given some congruent segments here. Uh, I'm told that WM is congruent to MY, so I can mark those congruent. Um, notice that I'm also told that MY is congruent to ZM. And if you notice there, that would be these two lower segments. Uh, technically, that's a different pair of congruent statements. Technically, I would make a different set of markings for those. However, if you look at what I'm trying to prove, I'm trying to prove that WM is congruent to ZM. I'm trying to show that these two segments right here are congruent. And I already know that the first is congruent to the second. I know that the second is congruent to the third. Notice that that's putting together a chain. And in fact, you can really see the chain in this set of statements right here. Uh, I can see that WM is congruent to MY. I can secondarily see that MY is also congruent to ZM. Well, if the first is congruent to the second, the second is congruent to the third, the first should be congruent to the third. You'll see that I can put together a little chain there. And we really hammered on that idea that if you can put together a chain of congruence statements, you can call this the transitive property. All right, so that's a nice illustration of the idea of the transitive property there. A first thing equal to a second, second equal to a third, so the first is also equal to the third. Moving on to the next example. See here, here that I have two straight angles. Uh, normally in a proof, you would need to say that those two straight angles were straight angles, assumed from diagram, and then you would need to state that those straight angles were congruent. In this case, they were nice enough to go ahead and tell you that they were congruent. They also tell you that two and four are congruent. We want to show that one and three are congruent. Well, if I've got two congruent angles, and I remove two congruent angles, I'm left with two congruent angles. Uh, this is just an example of the subtraction property. And you will see in this case also that you could try this with numbers. Okay, for example, if you made angle two a 30 degree angle, and you made angle four congruent to that, also 30 degrees, how would you find the measure of one and three? Well, those are both straight angles, so you subtract both from 180, you would find out that this was 150 degrees and that was 150 degrees. Point being, if you subtract equal angles from equal angles, you get an equal set of angles. So, again, an example of the subtraction property. And finally, our last example here, I have a triangle. You can see those two angles at the bottom congruent to each other. Uh, I'm told that angle one is congruent to angle two. Notice, double bisector statement. I have just a single bisector, probably going to tell me that two parts of the angle are congruent. But if I've got two things that are being bisected, I'm probably going to be dealing with sets of halves, or possibly holes that are being cut into halves. And this suggests that it's probably going to be one of the properties, because the properties are all about having equal things being done to two equal things. So if you notice, one and two are congruent to each other. I want to show that A, B, and B, C are congruent to each other. That's this whole base angle here, the whole base angle on the other side. So what I've been given here are halves that are congruent. I want to show that the holes are congruent. For example, if this was 20 degrees, and this was 20 degrees, and those angles were both being bisected, what would I do to show that those whole angles were congruent? I would double both of those 20s. When I'm doubling, I'm multiplying. All right, so if I'm multiplying here to get two things that are equal, this would be an example of the multiplication property.